section 2.4 part B. As we continue our look at 2.4 we'll continue in the homework remembering we have a blue box at the beginning of the section page 128 with this step-by-step -step approach to digging into word problems we left off last time with number 28 let's begin this time with number 30 step 1 read the problem number 30 a workout that combines weight training and aerobics burns a total of 371 calories if weight training burns two-fifths as many calories as aerobics how many calories does weight training burn? How many unknowns? I don't know the number of calories burned by weight training and I don't know the number of calories burned by doing aerobics. I know the total but I don't know those two specifics. So which one is given in terms of the other? It says Weight training burns blah 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 as aerobics. So weight training is given in terms of defined by its relationship to aerobics. Let's let our variable, let's call it A. Again, you can call it X if you want. I'm going to call it A because this is going to be my calories burned by doing aerobics. then I need some way in terms of that same variable A to indicate the number of calories burned doing weight training. It says weight training burns. Now look, I've, I've already written that. Weight training burns. Burns is your equal sign here. Weight training burns two-fifths as many calories as aerobics two-fifths of the number of calories for aerobics. So two-fifths times A. Two-fifths as many. How many calories does weight training burn? We've set up our unknowns. Step two. Both unknowns in terms of this same variable. Now, where's my condition in the problem that gives me the modeling equation? This again is a totaling type word problem. It says that together the two activities burn a total of 371 calories. So we will have calories burned by aerobics plus calories burned by weight training has to equal the total number of calories burned. There we are half English half algebra. Let's go full algebra. Calories burned during aerobics, we call that A. Calories burned doing weight training, we call that two-fifths A. And the total is given in the statement of the problem, 371. Now here's one of the times where I know we can clear the fractions. Multiply both sides of the equation by five. You see that, what that's going to do over here on the right-hand side? I think in this particular case, it might be a little slicker to leave the fractions in place. In which case, when I go to combine like terms here on the left, I will need a common denominator. This is 1a plus 2 fifths a. 1 as a fraction in fifths is 5 fifths. So I haven't changed the value of that term. I've just rewritten the way the 1 looks. Now combine like terms here on the left-hand side. That'll give me a total of 7 fifths A. And to get A by itself, now this I am going to show. Remember, we can multiply both sides by this fraction coefficient. The 5's will cancel, the 7's will cancel, to leave just that A. On the right hand side, I'm really hoping that 371 is divisible by 7, right? So I can cross cancel. Let's see. 7 into 371. 
7 into 37 will go 5 times. It's 35. Remainder 2. Bring down the 1. 7 into 21. 3 times. No remainder. Nice. So 7 goes into 371 53 times. And then 53 times 5. 53 times 5. Carry a 1. 265. We've solved the equation. Step three was write the equation. Step four, solve the equation. Step five, very important, go back and answer the question you were asked. Are they asking me for this number right here? The question is, how many calories does weight training burn? This is how many calories aerobics burn. So I need to figure out what is two-fifths times this value for A. Let's cross cancel. Guys, this is an easy cross cancel, isn't it? How many times does 5 go into 265? It's right here. 5 into 265? 53 times. And 2 times 53? 106. So calories burned by weight training is 106. We put units on it. If you want to label this weight training, that's fine. But in this particular problem, I don't have to because the only question was how many calories does weight training burn? I say 106 calories. That answers her question. Doesn't hurt to label it weight training, but in this particular case, I don't need to. Compared to number 28, we had to know which value was the tomato juice and which value was the pineapple juice. And so we needed labels there along with the units. But in this problem, this is the only answer. So be sure and get those units on there and we're good. How do we check this? Take it back to the original statement of the problem. It says... A workout that combines weight training and aerobics burns a total of 371 calories. Well, right there's my aerobics, the 265, and I think that the weight training is 106. Does that total three hundred seventy-one calories? Yes. It goes on to say, weight training burns two-fifths as many calories as aerobics. Well, I use that fact to find my 106. So I know that part's right. So it looks like this checks. We do not take a solution back to the equation. Because what if you wrote the wrong equation? You may have solved it correctly, but it may have nothing to do with the problem. Let's try number 40. This is one that tickles me. It says, number 40, a three foot long deli sandwich must be split into three pieces so that the middle piece is twice as long as the shortest piece and the shortest piece is eight inches shorter than the longest piece. How long should the three pieces be? Can you imagine going into Subway and ordering a sandwich like this? But again, this is something we can all wrap our heads around and practice developing these modeling equations. Can you imagine going in and saying, I need a three foot long sandwich. It must, it must be split into three pieces so that. That's pretty emphatic. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Now, first things first. Right here, I will not draw you a picture. I will never provide you a labeled picture. I might put a picture of a sandwich just because it's cute. But I'm not going to label it. I'm not going to give away any of the setup by drawing and labeling a figure. It's good as we get started here. But it's something that you've got to develop the skill to do yourself. 
A three foot long deli sandwich must be split into three pieces. We have a middle piece, we have a shortest piece, we have a longest piece. There are three unknowns in this problem. Now what should my variable represent? It says the middle piece is twice as long as the shortest. Well, then the middle piece is given what? In terms of the shortest. It goes on to say, and the shortest piece is eight inches shorter than the longest. So the short is given in terms of the long. Middle is given in terms of short, and short is given in terms of long. It all boils down to the longest piece. Let your variable, I'm going to call it L, represent the longest piece. Then we need some way to represent the shortest piece, some way to represent that middle piece. What does it tell me about the shortest in terms of the longest? It says the shortest piece is, look I've already written that, short is right there. The short is eight shorter, eight shorter, right? Eight less, eight subtracted from, eight shorter than the longest piece, which we called L. Let's talk about this middle piece. It says the middle piece is twice as long as the shortest piece. Now very careful. Does it say that the middle piece is two times L? No. That's twice as big as the longest. What does it say? It says the middle piece is, which I've already written that, middle is, twice as long as the short. Double the short piece. The short piece is called L minus 8. Double the short piece. Notice that the short piece is in parentheses. You're doubling that whole expression. We've set up our unknown, step 2. Step 3, write an equation. I think it's very clear what we're doing here. This is going to be, add up the three pieces, it better make a whole sandwich, right? The long plus the short. I'm just taking them in the order they appear here in my list. You could put these in any order because what? Addition is commutative. So really this is another totaling problem. So let's write our algebra equation. The long piece, we call that L. The short piece, we call that L minus 8. Strictly speaking, he gets parentheses, but they're going to fall right off. Plus, the middle piece, we call that 2 times the quantity L minus 8. As it was described, being twice the length of the, what? Shortest piece. Equals the total, 3 feet. Now wait. What units was this 8 in? This was 8 inches, right? This was 8 inches. So, everything here on the left hand side is in terms of inches. The right hand side then must be in terms of inches. And so, we know that 3 feet is 36 inches. Now we're ready. Step 4, solve the equation. We need to distribute this to this little set of parentheses like we said is going to fall right off. There's no number, no negative to distribute and so the associative property of addition governs that set of grouping symbols and allows me to drop them. The second set of parentheses can only be dropped after distributing that 2 to get 2L minus 16. Combine like terms. Here on the left hand side, L plus L plus 2L totals 4L. Minus 8 minus 16 is minus 24. Here again, we're focused on the word problems. We've already talked about how to solve equations. And so I don't typically write plus 24 plus 24 at this point. I will say out loud, add 24 to both sides. 
And I usually say it a couple of times. If you want plus 24, plus 24, do it. Put it in your notes. But I will not be writing that nearly as often on the board any longer. Add 24 to both sides. Add 24 to both sides. 36 plus 24 totals 60. Divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4 to find that L equals 4 goes into 60 15 times, right? When you divide by 4, you cut it in half twice. Half of 60 is 30, half again is 15. Nice and easy. All right. Answer the question you were asked, step 5. How long should the three pieces be? Well, the short pe the I'm sorry, the longest piece is what L represented. That's going to be 15. 15 inches. The short piece is going to be 15 minus 8. Eight inches shorter, or seven inches. The middle piece is going to be what? Double the short. The short is seven. Or you could plug 15 in for L and, and crank out the whole thing. But I already know 15 minus 8, that gave me my short piece 7 and doubled is 14. Now in this problem, one way to write my final answer is that I have the longest piece, there's my label, is 15 inches. And there are my units. The short piece, 7 inches. The middle piece, 14 inches. Nothing wrong with this. But also, I find nothing wrong with this. Because it is obvious which one of those is the shortest piece, which one of those is the longest. There's no mystery as to which piece we're talking about. And so in this case, the labels are great. When in doubt, go ahead and label. But in this problem, because it is obvious which one of these is the longest, which is the shortest, which is the middle piece, I don't see a need to label. There is no misunderstanding by giving the answer this way. And that's what you need to think about. Is there, a, is there the possibility that whoever looks at this answer is going to misunderstand what I'm telling them? In this case, no. And so the labels are not necessary. But like I said, when in doubt, it's best to go ahead and label. Check this one. Well, we go back to the statement of the problem. It's a three-foot deli sandwich. Let's save that for a minute. Three pieces. The middle piece, right here, right here at the bottom of the board, the middle piece, it says, is twice as long as the short. Yep, 14 is twice as long as 7. It says the short is 8 inches shorter than the longest. Take the longest, Take 8 inches off of 15, you're left with 7. Yes, so those check. Well, that's the information we used up here anyway, and already, to get our three answers. Now, what is really going to tell me that this finally checks? Is this a 3-foot sandwich? Do these lengths add up to a total of 36 inches? What do we have? 5, 7 is 12, 4 is 16, carry a 1. 1 and 1 and 1 is 3, and 7 makes... Wait a minute. <laughs> I counted the 7 as though it was in 10's place. Try that again. 5 and 7 are 12. Plus 4 is 16. Carry a 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1. There we go. 36 inches. And so that checks. Be sure to put a box only around what you've been asked to find. If you put a box around L equals 15, I'm going to take off points. Because you were not asked to state the solution to the equation. You were asked to state how long are the three pieces. Don't put a box around your check. 
That's not what you were asked to find. It's a good idea to do it. You put a box around your final answer only. Let's shift gears. Let's look at number 50. In number 50, it says, Two apartments have numbers that are consecutive integers. The sum of the numbers is 59. What are the two apartment numbers? Let's make sure we understand what's being said. First of all, consecutive integers. If the first one is 7, the next one is 8. If the first one is negative 2, the next one is negative 1. Right? The next one bigger. Consecutive means in a row, in order. The first one is 100. The next one is 101. Now, in a minute, we're also going to talk about consecutive even integers and consecutive odd integers. Consecutive integers are one apart. Consecutive evens. If I tell you I'm thinking of two even numbers, two consecutive even integers, and the first one's two, what's the next one? Four. First one is 18. The next one is, the next even number is 20. If I tell you the first one is negative eight, the next one bigger is negative six. Consecutive even integers are two apart. Consecutive odd integers, like one and three, 17 and then comes 19, negative one and then positive one. Consecutive odd integers are also two apart. We need to bear that in mind as we go through these next several problems. So number 50 says two apartments have numbers that are consecutive integers. The sum of the numbers is 59. What are the two apartment numbers? Well, let's see. If there's some with 60, that'd be like 30 and 30. This is uh, 29 and 30. Done? No. Absolutely not. That is correct. And out of the six points that this might be worth, I will let you keep one of those points for the answer. Some of these may be easy enough from time to time that you know what to, you can figure out what that answer is. That is not what I'll be testing you on. What we're doing here, talking about sandwiches, talking about orange juice and, and I'm sorry, pineapple juice and tomato juice, talking about wins and losses on ESPN. We are learning to model these problems with algebraic equations. So the final answer will never be good enough. That answer is worth a point. We've read the problem. Step two, set up your unknowns. How many unknowns are there in this problem? The two apartment numbers. And let me write it like this. The first of these two consecutive integers and the second consecutive integer. Call one of them X. Call the first one X. Okay, if I, if I told you I'm thinking of consecutive integers, the first one's 2, then the next one is 3. The first one's 7, the next one's 8. How are you figuring that out each time? You're adding 1. And so if I tell you the first number I'm thinking of is X, then the next consecutive integer has to be one bigger than that, x plus one. So there's the setup of our unknowns, all in terms of this same variable, x. Now let's set up the equation. It says the sum of the numbers is 59. The sum of these two apartment numbers, x and x plus one, strictly speaking, x plus one goes in parentheses, but they're going to fall right off. No number, no negative to distribute. 
the sum of these two apartment numbers, these two consecutive integers, is 59. That's the big part of this problem I'm looking for. Can you set up that equation? I need to see the setup of the unknowns. I need to see the equation. I need to see you solve it. I need to see you answer the question that was asked. Combine like terms here on the left. Subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1 from both sides. And divide both sides by 2. Divide both sides by 2 to find that x is 29. Now answer the question you were asked. What are the two apartment numbers? Well, if the first one of these two consecutive integers is 29, then the next one is 30. I don't need labels here. I know which one's first, which one's second. I don't need units here. Apartment numbers don't have units. They're just numbers. And so there's my answer. Quick and easy check. What's supposed to be true? The sum of these two numbers should be 59. And it is, so that checks. Number 52. Number 52. Find two consecutive even integers such that 6 times the lesser added to the greater gives a sum of 86. First, let's decide what our unknowns are. How many are there? We have two, these two consecutive even integers. If I let x represent the first of these consecutive what? Even integers. Then how do I represent the second one? Even integers are two apart. If the first one's two, the next one's four. If the first one is 14, the next one's 16. If the first one's x, the next one is x plus 2. We've set up our unknowns. Let's set up our equation. This is a translating problem. Find two consecutive even integers such that. Such that means, hey, here it comes. Such that. Six times the lesser. Which of these two is the smaller number? The x or the x plus 2? This is the small one. This is the lesser. This guy is the greater. Such that. Six times the lesser. Six times the x. Six times the lesser, lesser added to. Because what if it said subtracted from? Could you put 6x minus? No, it would have to be something minus 6x. In fact, let me make me a little room. Let's scoot this over a little so I have room to work in front of it. 6 times the lesser added 2. I want to stay in that habit of translating literally. 6 times the lesser added 2 added to what? Added to the greater. That's our x plus 2. Strictly speaking, parentheses, but they fall right off. Gives a sum of, that's my equal sign, gives a sum of 86. We are just translating from English to algebra. That's all we're doing. Math is a language, and we're learning to speak it. We're learning to read it. This equation tells me everything I need to know about the problem. It's all right there in that equation, if I know how to read that equation. The nice thing about equations they are questions that answer themselves. All you have to do is solve. Simplify the left-hand side. Combine like terms to get 7x and plus that 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. Subtract 2 from both sides. Divide both sides by 7. Divide both sides by 7. This is a multiplication fact you should know. 7 times what is 48? <laughs> I said that backwards. 7 times what is 84? 7 times 12. We solve the equation. Now answer the question. Find 
two consecutive even integers such that and then that condition has to be met well we found X that's the first of our two numbers if the first of our two even numbers is 12 then the next one is what 14 check this one back in the statement of the problem such that six times the lesser six times the lesser the 12 that's 72 that added to the greater had better give me a total of 86 it says in the problem it gives a sum of 86 here's 6 times the lesser added to the greater a sum of 86 and so that checks we don't check back in the equation what if we wrote the wrong equation number 54 Number 54, find two consecutive odd integers such that twice the greater is 17 more than the lesser. We have two unknowns. We don't know these two consecutive odd integers. We'll call the first consecutive odd integer, call that x. Then we need some way to represent the second consecutive odd integer. Odds are how far apart. If the first one's 3, the next one's 5. If the first one's 17, the next one's 19. They're two apart, just like evens. Don't let this word throw you. Okay, a common mistake is when we see odd, we do an x plus 1. I've even seen x plus 3, but that's wrong. How do you get from 7 to 9? How do you get from 13 to 15? You're still adding two. Odds are still two apart. We set up our unknowns. And this is a translating problem. Find two consecutive odd integers such that. Such that means here it comes. Twice the greater. Again, x is the lesser. The first one is the smaller one. x plus 2. The second one is the bigger or the greater. Such that twice the greater, two times, two times what? That whole thing, that whole x plus 2, note the parentheses. What are you doubling? That whole thing. Twice the greater is 17 more, right? 17 more than the lesser. 17 more than the lesser. The lesser one is the x. And so we're set up. Solve the equation. Distribute the 2. Subtract x from both sides. Subtract x from both sides. Subtract 4 from both sides. Subtract 4 from both sides. Answer the question you were asked. Find these two consecutive odd integers. If the first one is 13, the next consecutive odd integer, or two bigger than that, is going to be 15. How do we check this? We go back to the word statement of the problem. It says that my two consecutive odd integers should be such that twice the greater Okay, twice the greater, 15 doubled is 30. That should be the same as 17 more than the lesser. And it is. And so that checks. That's our look at section 2.4. If you want more practice than what I have assigned, you holler at me and I will provide you with the even numbered answers that go along with our homework set. If you want more practice. So now, let's see. 
you're ready to pick up and do the homework now from number 29 and we're going to take that up through 59 29 to 59 because uh, part A we went up through number 27 so you're ready to pick up with number 29 I'll let you get started on that you holler at me if you have questions